Okay, people. Uh, so I'm, I'm only here now to, you know, this is, my name is Kristin Bro. I'm a head of the DHS2 at the HIST at the University of Oslo. I'm very, very happy to, to, um, to introduce Samira, Dr. Samira Asma, um, uh, Assistant Director General for DDI, uh, for WHO, uh, and the head of the DDI, the Division of Data Analytics and Delivery for Impact at the WHO. Very happy to invite you, Samira, our dear friend. However, we never met in person, but when all this is over, we will <laughs> meet. <laughs> so please welcome, Samira, for the, the opening remark. For this. Absolutely. We will meet. Uh, can you hear us? Yes, we can hear you. Good afternoon, uh, delegates and dear colleagues. I'm very much delighted to speak here today to you on behalf of WHO Director General Dr. Tedros, who could not join us, but reminds us that if we cannot make progress, if we cannot measure progress, we cannot make progress. The COVID-19 pandemic is having far-reaching consequences and its impact is being acutely felt in every corner of the world and will unfortunately continue for some time to come. Today, the world reached over 30 million and 675,000 confirmed cases and 954,417 tragic deaths. Behind every number is a person, a family, and a community, and we must never forget this. We were already off track to meet the health-related SDGs, and the pandemic has set progress further back, jeopardizing the hard-earned gains that we have achieved. Even worse, without data systems, we will not know with confidence whether we are on track or not. And that is why I'm here today. Responding to and understanding the direct and indirect impact of COVID-19 rests upon robust data and health information systems in countries. However, too many countries lack the infrastructure and resources to report timely, reliable, and actionable information. And we must urgently need to address these gaps. As Christian already introduced, uh, I work in the Division of Data Analytics and Delivery for Impact. And our focus is to work with partners, to work with you, to find innovative, scalable solutions to improve health information systems through collaboration. I want to talk about three things today, leveraging partnerships, scaling data solutions, and delivering impact in countries. The University of Oslo is a long-standing partner of WHO and a collaborating center for health information systems and innovations. The district health information system is a fantastic contribution in the field of health information system that we all know and use. DHIS2 is a practical tool that harnesses the power of data. It is currently used in over 70 countries and still going in an expanded phase and covers more than 30% of the world's population. Within a few days of the pandemic, the DHIS2 team rapidly responded to countries and introduced the COVID mortality surveillance package not only for COVID, but for other health topics such as TB, HIV, malaria, maternal and child health, and the list goes on, that we are partnering with University of Oslo and, and our member states to develop standard packages. In WHO, in WHO's World Health Statistics report that was launched this year in May, we highlighted the lack of primary underlying data to report on a number of SDGs 
And in response to this gap, WHO a few weeks ago launched the Score for Health data technical package, which is a group of about 90 standard data collection um, tools from surveys to strengthening CRVS to reporting and optimizing on routine health information systems, reporting on data through a data governance mechanism, and finally enabling use of data. That's what SCORE stands for. But we also mentioned DHIS2 as one of the uh, tools uh, to, uh, uh, to introduce and use to improve the um, uh, health information systems. At WHO, we have uh, established a high-level strategic goal, as you know, which we call the triple billion targets. The, this, these triple billion targets help us to reach uh, the SDGs by 2030. This is WHO's targets that member states have signed off to. To help us make progress towards the SDGs, we aim to reach 1 billion more people benefiting from universal health coverage and the world be better prepared from health emergencies and at least a billion more people enjoying better health and well-being. And all of this needs good underlying data. And we are now less than a decade away from SDGs. And we cannot wait for another 10 years to fix the data problems that we have. We must accelerate the solutions now to preserve the successes gained and not only to meet SDGs, but also to surpass them. So an important point that Tore Godal has reminded me that DHIS should not be regarded as just a reporting tool. It is not. It must be used to improve performance of health deliver, healthcare delivery at the primary healthcare in districts and healthcare systems. And this is going to be extremely important, improving the quality of data, but also using the data to improve performance as well as reporting. Would like to highlight one important area that is non-communicable diseases, which we know is an important burden globally. We also know that it is an underlying aggravating factor that impacts COVID patients. Developing and adding a standard package on NCDs into DHIS2 is going to be extremely important. And we look forward to working with you on this collaboration. Bringing partnerships, data, and digital tools and innovation together with an aim to strengthen country capacity is a sustainable way that we can achieve our goals. Dr. Ted Rose's mission is simple, to promote health, keep the world safe, and serve the vulnerable, as you have heard him repeating this often. But we can only achieve this with accurate, timely, and comparable health data. I would like to once again thank you for your work to support better health outcomes at home and a more effective emergency response worldwide. I hope that this event sparks ideas to shorten the time from data to decision making. Thank you very, very much for having us over. Thank you so much, Samira. Thank you so much for reminding us why we are here now um, on a digital annual conference instead of sitting in Oslo uh, and, and uh, enjoying our own um, discussions and company um, on site. So thank you so much, Samira. Um, then I think I would like to declare this, uh, this uh, annual conference uh, this year digital uh, for open and it's actually do you have slides um, uh, we have some slides here I'm very unhappy that we have some technical issues but maybe that's the reason the reason is that we this year when it's digital we have 1240 participants registered 
Uh, last year we had 286 on site. So at least it's, a, it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity uh, when it's digital that we are more um, um, available, uh, even though we had some technical hiccups in the beginning. So um, this year um, we have 103 um, countries uh, represented. So again, thank you, Samira. Uh, the, the, the great um, uh, collaboration with WHO has actually enabled us to be able, as you mentioned, be very, very fast in, the, in responding to the global um, pandemic. And um, as you mentioned, that WHO already in 25th of January um, issued a public statement using a government to be ready to test and be pre prepared. Um, then only two days after, or four days after, Sri Lanka was able to, to, to deploy a port of entry app on top of the HS2 um, as a response to the global pandemic. And um, I think that um, in order uh, for us, um, in this very, very strange time, we have been able, the global community of, around, surrounding the DHS2, the, um, the, all the regional groups uh, in the global south of his groups, has been able to leverage on the uh, years of investment from all our partners in capacity, in software, in best practice, uh, uh, working with the WHO on making the health packages together, we've been, we have been able to gather and be able to respond to the, the, um, the various legislations, the various um, ways the, the pandemic unfold. And I would like to mention, I know that we have mentioned many times, but the, 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 the example of the Sri Lanka that two days after the first two confirmed cases, in 20, not confirmed, suspected, uh, 29th of January was able to do a port of entry. And today um, they have been supported. Um, for instance, the Palestine came to us and told us that they have uh, fully deployed uh, all the packages for the Palestine with only the help of Sri Lanka. And now this uh, Sri Lanka has now stated that um, since they have been supported, the, the, the Ministry of Health so good when it comes to the, the COVID-19 work, the whole integrated HMIS will now be based on DHS2. And before it was only uh, uh, fragmented the support from various programs. So this shows the capacity of the global community to do a quick response. And the, this uh, year's conference, we really shed light on sharing experience across the globe. Um, this is the seventh uh, annual conference. Earlier we called it Expert Academy. Then we understood that we don't really become expert by sharing stories with each other and the latest news of the HS2 uh, functionality and innovations. However, so last year we started to call it annual conference. However, we have held it seven times and this time digital and then we can reach out probably to more people. So, but our main um, effort has been on responding as Samira mentioned on this global pandemic. And that has been possible because we have uh, had this partnership with the WHO, with all our partners, and, um, and of course, with all our investing partners. Because, of course, NORAD, always the best in the class, already um, uh, one week after the lockdown, was able to release funds, uh, uh, 2.5 million US dollars for supporting the COVID-19 work. So we could say full gas people, full gas, all our partners in the HISP groups, uh, do whatever it takes to support your countries and, um, and be able to share all the good innovations coming from Sri Lanka, coming from Mozambique, coming from Uganda, coming from, from Tanzania, to be able to support uh, each country. And then a global fund um, also were able to, to give us extra fund. Gavi was reallocating funds. And now today we have been entering into a new five years collaborative agreement with CDC, which we are very, very happy of. Of course, this is uh, for uh, disease surveillance, COVID and beyond, but that's kind of uh, showing that long-term uh, commitment to dealing with um, upcoming uh, health issues 
is very important. And it's possible because we have been uh, working on this platform uh, to develop this health information system on top of DHS2 since 1994. And together with all these partners, this has been possible. So we are very, very happy that we now convene in this, I would say, the biggest annual conference ever, even the biggest DHS2 Academy ever, with these 1,200 over participants. I hope you are able to register, that we don't have too many um, hiccups for, or for dealing with this soon. Uh, if, if you have problems, please reach out. And of course, we have then the PEPFAR, the Gates, and all the others that are investing in the platform per se is very, very enabling us to be able to react as fast as we have been done, doing. And this year's conference will actually share all these highlights. Today we will do the, the most popular, normally the most popular session, when Lars, the tech lead, the lead of the software, will tell what's new in DHS2, what kind of new innovations have we been able to respond to during this um, pandemic time, but also uh, other uh, issues, of course, because the, the health information system work, the routine is, is still going on. And then we will have a special session on tracker, innovations on tracker, in, innovations on Android. We see when we do, um, especially during the COVID, we need to uh, register uh, or track individuals' labs, and we need to reach out to the, to the unreached with um, smartphones and tablets. What is new from sort of new, we have had it before, but now it's actually every day we have an expert launch. Every day at four o'clock, you can look up who to meet and who to, you can ask questions and there will be different um, possibilities every day, except on the Thursday, because then we will have the use case bazaar. This time without pizza, without wine, without beer, however, we will still have the use case bazaar. Tomorrow, we will have the big COVID-19 day, where all the, 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 we will start with a plenary of the global response, and we will close by a plenary of the global uh, response. In between, we will share parallel sessions of stories, innovation, local innovation, and we will also share some stories from Norway. Actually, it happened to be the first time in history that the HS2 have been used on any government in the Western um, side, on the North. So the North are learning from the South. And that's kind of interesting. So we will have a parallel session on that one. And day three, meaning um, Wednesday, we will, we will elaborate more and talk more about the collaboration and the, with the WHO. And we will start with the plenary with WHO. And then we have parallel sessions on key innovations and new packages uh, when it, um, on, on uh, WHO. And also we will have on Wednesday a tech track. And that tech track will go over two days. Wednesday and Thursday. We normally, we know that that's a very, very um, popular track. And then uh, innovation will be shown. It will be discussed and showed and taught when to develop a custom app, when should we go for, uh, for the global app, and so forth. So both days. Day four will be emphasizing on innovations on top of DHS2. Cross sector, new sectors coming. We couldn't, we cannot say that the, the logistics and LMIS is a new sector. However, it's a new effort. It's not so new. However, but now we are doing much more on the, on the LMIS and the logistics. We will report and we will have two days on DHS2 for education, innovations, and discussing how the cross sectors, education and health, how that can impact. We will tell stories from the Uganda and from the Gambia and also from Mozambique and Togo. Uh, CHS will also be part of this one. And then we will have use case bazaar. The day five will not be going to the island as we used to. It will, however, be interesting enough, hopefully, with the, the app uh, awarding the app competition. It will be uh, presenting the, the roadmap for the coming years. And it will be a closing session, of course. So we are very sorry that we cannot go to the island. We hope that to see uh, all of you, maybe not all of you, but many of you uh, in also next year. And we hope it's possible to have on-site academies next year. Uh, and with this, I think I can leave the word to Lush to do, no, to Max, sorry. There are some 
there are some uh, logistics to mention, even though we are on digital, maybe even more. So thank you, Max. Hi, yeah, as Kristen mentioned, and I as Max, I'm in charge of communications and responsible for the training programs here at DHS2 at University of Oslo. And we just wanted to share a little bit of information about um, the logistics of how this online conference is going to work. So I have a quick slide here, and this slide has a lot of links in it, which you can then go and look at um, on Skip. All of our um, all of our links and presentation links are on Skip. So let me just share my screen here for a moment. All right, so here you can see um, the links I was mentioning. So as I said, SCAD is our home page for this conference. You can find the links to all the sessions there. Um, if you are attending, you can upload your picture. We are going to try to make a group photo with all of your pictures this year. So I hope you'll do that. Um, then Zoom is our primary channel for the actual presentations. So each uh, scheduled meeting or scheduled session has a Zoom like associated with it. There are four virtual rooms per day. So a lot of these sessions continue one after another in the same room. So if you continue on that track, you don't need to switch between the rooms. But if you want to go between them, you're welcome to do so. Um, we are managing our Q&A this year through the community of practice. And so you all have gotten an email asking you to create an account if you haven't done that already. So we'd appreciate it if you do that. That allows us to keep these conversations going after the annual conference is over. And finally, we will be recording all of these and posting the sessions to YouTube so you can watch them afterwards. You can share them with other people who weren't able to attend in real time. Uh, the link to the playlist that we created is right uh, there. That's our YouTube channel. And we'll be sharing those every day. So our goal is to get the recordings up from today's sessions uh, by later this evening. All right, and with that, we're gonna take a short break um, so that we can transition to the next session, which will be ours. We just need a few minutes to get him set up to make sure we have all the technical details worked out. So thanks for your patience.